Hello everybody, welcome to another quick video. Now today, out and about, sort of, doing a little bit of, sort of nature walk, and I've got with me the Panasonic 100-400 lens. Um, did a bit of a sort of comparison video uh, a couple of years back, I'll pop a link to it in the description up above. Basically just did a basic rundown of, sort of this versus the Olympus. Um, it was very sort of quick, just a few little shots and stuff like that. But what I've done, I've brought out a bit more of an in-depth test. Um, Conditions aren't exactly ideal, it's not massively bright, so it'd be a good test for it, because it's not the fastest lens in the world, um, as the 100 to 400s aren't. Um, but it'd be interesting to see what you can get from it, and what my thoughts are, sort of doing a bit more sort of in-depth, really sort of checking to see what the stability's like and things like that. So hopefully, get some interesting shots. We'll see what pops up. I've already seen a few sort of birds around. You can probably hear the birds all around at the moment. So let's see what we can find. So initial impressions of the lens is obviously it's quite compact for 100 to 400 obviously it has got external zoom so it does get a little bit longer as you're actually using it but as far as sort of focal range goes it's the same as the olympus so it's still 100 to 400 so you've got a good amount of uh, sort of zoom on it now it's not a fixed aperture so at the long end you have got sort of f6.3 which is something you do need to consider especially if you've got a bit of a dull day like we've got today um you've got a sort of Bear that in mind, you might need to up your ISOs with it. I mean, I'm running today, literally an aperture priority like I normally do for wildlife, auto ISO. Um, it's picking around about 600th to 800th of a second on the uh, the shutter speed. And ISO, I've seen around about ISO 2000 at the moment, which, to be fair, with the OM1, it's not a problem at all. Um, occasionally, you do get sort of bits where it bumps up a little bit higher. But to be fair, with the noise reduction that you've got these days, it's not too much of a problem. Even if you sort of play around with the stuff that I do built in with the editing software I use, it's not really much of a problem. So certainly worthwhile. Now, the other thing that is quite nice about this is it's not a heavy lens. It may be sort of well built, but it's not a heavy lens. Um, so, yeah, so you can just like handle it around. It's not as heavy as the 300, put it that way. Um, if you remember, right, there's something like 965 grams without the... Uh, little foot on there because we've not got that on there at the moment so this is just a low lens that I've got um, but it's not a massively heavy lens certainly sort of the combination with the OM1 it's not much more than wandering around with the 12 100 so that's not much of a problem at all now as far as sort of usability goes the first thing that you do notice is the zoom is the opposite way to the Olympus lenses it takes a little bit of getting used to you sort of go sort of pull out to zoom but no wrong way uh, this Mark 1 lens because they've actually just released a Mark 2 with a few improvements on it um, it is a little bit tight on the, the zoom um, not too much but certainly you can't just like very smoothly move it I don't know you can work that out so it's a little bit choppy um, so you don't be you know, a little bit mindful on that side of it but the big thing you've got with certainly using this lens with an Olympus body is you don't get the synchronised um, image stability um, on a Panasonic body, one well, of well, the Lumix bodies, with the built in sort of IBIS, you will get sort of the synchronization between the lens and the body, um, which is something you don't get with this. But to be fair, the in lens stability does seem to be pretty good, I must admit. Um, I've certainly not noticed any real big problems. Occasionally, when you're doing some panning, you get a little bit of chop from it, but it's to be expected. You've got, you know, basically sort of quite a long focal length, I mean, equivalent to about 800mm on a full frame in a small package that you know, sort of is being stabilised so just something to consider anyway but right, go try and get a couple of shots off a couple of geese on the way over so let's get a few out and uh, I'll drop a couple of shots up now with it Now where we've come to today is Fradley Pool in Staffordshire. 
Um, so when I came a few years back, actually, just thought to wander around. I didn't really bring the cameras with us. Um, but remember it being quite a nice little spot. It's right next to the canal at Fradley Junction. Um, so there's quite a bit around. And potential may see a kingfisher. Um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but, yeah, that's Jill's idea to come around here. There's also a few bits and bobs that I might try and pick out that's not wildlife. Because um, we seem to be sort of seeing quite a few crocuses and daffodils coming up. So I'll be able to have a play with that. Like I say, we're at f6.3 on the lens at the wide end. I've gone as wide as I can, um, and we'll see what we can get out of it. Hopefully, so we'll see a few different bits and bobs. There's a lot of gulls around, um, quite a few sort of little sort of spots around sort of in the middle of the pond itself. Um, so they're sort of camped out there. So we'll see what crops up. A few nice grasses around, and I do know there's a bit of a wooded section a bit further over. So hopefully, we'll get something interesting. Bird-wise, I'm going to go for absolutely anything I can find, so it'll be a good mix of stuff, and essentially a, a proper real-world test, so keep on wondering, and let's see what crops up. As far as clarity from the lens goes, it seems to be pretty good. I mean, it's not up with the 300mm f4, but I wouldn't expect it to be. Yeah, you're not looking at pro glass here, but you are looking at some decent glass. It's maybe slightly soft sometimes at sort of the long end at 400, but it's certainly nothing to sort of really worry about. Um, I think the biggest problem you do tend to find uh, more than anything is the fact that because you're actually sort of going quite a distance, is sort of getting the depth of field sort of right. So. It's ideal really if you can sort of get something that's in the mid-ground so you can sort of fill the frame with it but it's not too far away. Uh, I think, yeah, it's the usual thing with sort of the bigger the lens you get, the more sort of tempted you are to get something that's like miles away right the way over the other side. Um, so just basically sort of shooting for the, the lens range that you've got um, really does help out. I mean, a lot of the problem I do tend to find with the 300 is sometimes it's things that are a little bit close, which is why this is quite handy because you can zoom out, get to the hundred, and sort of still get yeah you know, a reasonable sort of level sort of depth of field from it, and you get an decent sort of range to actually shoot through. Uh, but yeah, the temptation is always sort of you're at the long end. You want to be sort of you know you get something that's miles away. It doesn't always work. So you end up sort of what you think it actually works okay is actually a little bit too small to actually work. So uh, just something to be mindful of really. But come around to this bit, we've got sort of a few swans and bits and bobs around. So. Um, Start growing a few bits and bobs sort of coming into the woods uh, more than anything. So maybe sort of try and get something of the swans. We'll see if they, they behave. But one way they can hear, yeah, got quite a lot of birdsong and some noise over in the background. Uh, quite a lot of birdsong around in the woods. So so you can get some nice woodland birds. Like I say, it's a perfect test case. It's not perfect conditions. It's not super bright light and giving you all the, uh, the sort of the nice ideal conditions for sort of massive shutters. You know, plus your speeds, stupidly. Uh, Clean ISOs. This is a real world test that we can sort of play with and see what uh, what results we can get from it. Now another really handy little thing with this is it's got a built in actual sort of miniature lens hood. Now you do have one that you can actually bolt onto that, which is a bit more substantial, but it's not that that's actually built in and literally. You can push that out. So, you know, a day like today where it's not bright sunlight, but you just want a little bit of extra shade, it's ideal for it. It's a really handy little idea. Um, like I say, you can tell really sort of how compact that is. Um, it's not much bigger than the 12 to 100 when it's, when it's set up. So, yeah, not a compact setup. Um, surprisingly clean sort of images through the sort of the range. Not, you know, it's like they're not sort of big groundbreaking, but yeah, it's definitely good enough. So, as yet, a few birds on the water, fantastic robin a little bit further up there, a um, lot of bird songs up in the trees, so we're going to head into the wooded section now, have a bit of a wander around, so, at the moment no sign of a kingfisher, which we we're kind of hoping there would be, but I don't know, they're kind of elusive, so, um, good, get some wood and stuff, see what sort of, what birds are up here, I can hear a few 
blue tits and probably grey tits around some very shouty ghouls on the water uh, but we'll see what we can find and try and rattle them off because this will be a really nice test because obviously in the trees it's a bit darker and we'll see how clean the, th the shots come out So I've come for a little bit of a wander along the canal uh, and just see if there's anything around there as well. Um, but as far as focusing speed goes on the lens, yeah, it seems fairly snappy. Uh, doesn't seem to miss focus ever, so it's always a bonus. Um, certainly tied with the own one, the focusing speed and sort of accuracy seems, yeah, pretty good, I must admit. Um, the thing that's sort of to get you to a little bit is sort of the opposite way for the zoom, but yeah, once you've sort of done it a few times, you sort of get used to it and it's not too much of a problem. Uh, but yeah, I can, so I can keep wandering along the canal for a little bit now. Um, hopefully, we'll spot something that might pop out. I can, so I can do a few bits and bobs around. Um, so still got fingers crossed, see something like a heron or a kingfisher, something a little bit different. But let's have a few miles up the canal and back again, see what we can find, and uh, hopefully, get a few more shots in. Thing to the Panasonic 100 400 then. Yeah, it's a good solid performer, nice and compact, fairly lightweight, and although it's not like the fastest lens in the world at f5 to uh, f6.3, you can get some great results. Got to be a little bit careful with the light because obviously it's a bit slower than sort of what you'd hope for, really. But yeah, it's the same with you know, say the Sigma 150 to 600 on full frame, that's f5.6 to 6.3, so it, you're getting a similar sort of uh, sort, similar sort of range to it. Yes, the Mark IV thirds, you, you're losing a little bit on the uh, the depth of field, but nothing really sort of too bad. Um, would I recommend it? Yes, I think I would. Um, it's a nice setup if you don't want the excess weight and you want something that's yeah, a reasonably good performer. It does lose a little bit on the fact that you know you haven't got the Sync IS with the Olympus, but you have with the Panasonic body. So it depends which body you've got, so which one really sort of would be sort of the preference, but in general, it's a great little lens and get some great results out of it. Um, as I said before, there is a Mark II of the lens that's come out now, which has got a few little extra features. They've actually sorted out the problem with the tight uh, focus ring that you get on some of the lenses. Uh, that was one of the complaints that you used to get from it. Uh, they've also sort of had it so that you can now use a teleconverter on. This has got a fixed rear element. Um, Obviously, with the teleconverter, it sort of pokes out of the way, um, so you couldn't actually use it with a teleconverter. The new one actually has a retractable one, so as you put it in, it actually sort of moves out of the way. Great idea, um, but it does mean now you've got access to using the Panasonic 1.4 and two times teleconverters. Uh, 1.4, yes, I'd say it worked fairly well. You can basically sort of at full range be up at sort of f8, but yeah, it's still usable. Um, the two times teleconverter, I think from experience, you'd end up with it being a little bit too soft and you'd lose a bit too much on the, uh, the actual stops. So I think I'd probably push it up to something like an F9 ish, something like that. Uh, possibly even up to an F11. I'd have to look it up properly, but they're the sort of ranges that you'd be in, which to me is a little bit too slow and you're going to sort of struggle a little bit with the image getting a bit soft because although on paper it looks great, you, you run it at sort of equivalent sort of 1600mm full frame. It's going to be very soft because you're pushing the elements far too hard uh, but in general yeah it's a great lens as it stands certainly the om one it works brilliantly um i'd love to try and set it on a panasonic body like g9 or something like that uh might something to look at in the future but certainly yeah as it stands it's a good option and generally sort of on the used market these tend to come up a little bit cheaper than the uh, olympus lenses as well so definitely worthwhile but is it something to be interested in? Drop us a comment down below. Let us know. Um, not, like to know your experience as well if you're actually using one of these with a Panasonic body. Nice to see uh, you know, sort of what the comparisons would be. Uh, but for now, hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do give us a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. But from which is very, very quiet bird life um, areas of, on the Trenton Mersey Canal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Take care.
Thank you.